One of the hottest trends in fly fishing today is the trout spay. And what is a trout spay? Well, it's really simply a modification of the tactics and tackle that come from the spay casting of the Pacific Northwest and even back in England and modified for a fish that's much closer to home that we all fish for, which is trout. We're here in Montana on the Big Hole River with Tom Larimer, who's a master spay caster, and he's gonna explain what trout spay is all about. Doesn't matter if you're on the West Coast, the East Coast, the Rocky Mountains, most of us have trout streams really close to our house. And so, you know, watching what it's done in the two-handed world, obviously spay casting has just gotten so big, it, it, it's really no mystery that it's now starting to really take holds in other places, especially in the world of trout. So before we talk about some of the tackle and maybe some of the techniques, I think we kind of have to ask ourselves, why would you want to spay cast for trout? And there's a bunch of reasons. I think the first one is, you know, as fly fishermen, we made a choice. When we started fly fishing, we made a choice to say, you know, I'm more interested in the process than I am the product of the sport, right? There's a lot easier ways to catch a bunch of fish. Oh, there was one right there. So with that being said, you know, sometimes as, as anglers, we try, to, we try to always think about like, what's the most efficient way to do it. And the reality is, is that there's times where this isn't the most efficient tool. And there's a reason why this has gotten so big. People get into this, they get addicted. You know, there's some other kind of side benefits that if you're maybe an angler that has a, a bum shoulder, right? You've got that shoulder injury, casting a single hand rod, you can only do it for a few hours. This is a great tool because it allows you to really kind of minimize your effort from a casting standpoint. Those of you that are maybe a little bit older, you don't like wading out super deep in a run. Spay rod allows you to cast with very little room behind you, and a lot of times you don't have to get very far off the shore. So outside of that, just from a, a, a fishing standpoint, right, I think what makes these things so effective, and a lot of people think, well, it's just because you can cast far, right, and there's no doubt we can cast really far with these things, but it's about control for me. And in a lot of different situations, when I'm streamer fishing with one of these things, I can make a long cast, I can control my streamer out there, I can animate it, do all those things. And a river like this, we're on the, on the big hole today, you know, this isn't a super big fishery, but I would struggle hitting that far side with just a single hand rod. Whereas with this rod, I can make a pretty easy cast and I can get it out there. The other side of this that not many people are talking about is this is a phenomenal indicator tool. You know, this happens to be an 11 foot five weight uh, GLX switch um, and these lighter switch rods now that have come out, you know, you can do some amazing things with an indicator rig with it and reach that water that nobody else is, is really fishing. So a lot of reasons why you should try this, this sport because it's something new and it's really fun, it's really versatile, and it's going to open up some water that those single hander guys just can't get to. So now that you know why, Let's talk a little bit more about how and what. I'm gonna walk you guys through some basic tackle that will kind of allow you to get started with this. It's a little intimidating at first, but I think this video will help you wade through it. So let's take a look at the tackle. You know, there's a lot of great rods out there now in the, the trout sizes, and which is great. There's a great selection. I'm gonna to talk today a little bit about our G Loomis lineup. Uh, so, you know, in general, let's just talk about line weights. So it's kind of starting at, at sort of the top of the food chain. You know, when we go up to Alaska and we swing for trout, we're really using almost steelhead gear. Seven weights, six weights, we're typically throwing, you know, really, really heavy sculpins with maybe 10 feet of T10 sink tip, which is a fairly fast sinking sink tip, or even maybe a little heavier than that. So you need to have a little bit of mass to turn over those kind of bigger flies and bigger sink tips. So depending on where you're fishing, if your fishery requires big flies and big sink tips, you may actually be using a six or a seven weight. As we move down the ladder, kind of a five weight in my mind is, is really kind of the ultimate sort of streamer uh, stick. So this is an 11 foot five weight GLX. We make a 10 and a half foot five weight in our Pro 4X series. Really, really nice sticks for, you know, kind of mid-sized streamers. You could still get away with throwing some pretty uh, big stuff with this, um, but you know, we're, we're not gonna be throwing, you know, this, right? Um, this, this is, a uh, a line that's it will do the soft tackle thing but it's still a little bit heavy it kind of depends on where you're fishing those of you that like to fish places like the madison river where they swing a little bigger soft tackle bigger trout you know heavier tippets that works great uh, maybe for you know uh, s s 
you know, fishing anywhere where you've got trout, let's just say in that like 15 to 20, 21 inch range, you know, a five weight's gonna be applicable. So as you move down from there, we start getting into the four weight families. And that in my mind is, is a pretty versatile weight for trout spay. Um, as long as I don't have to throw really big stuff, you know, it'll throw like a, a streamer like this size, kind of a Sculptzilla, something like that, buggers. It's still got enough behind it that you can throw a sink tip, maybe, you know, 10 feet of T10 or smaller. Um, but it's now starts to get light enough where we can start to use it for, you know, soft tackle fishing. We can use it for indicator fishing. It allows us to fish some lighter, light, lighter weight tippet and stuff like that. Um, and uh, then when we get down into like the three weights, now that really becomes, in my mind, a, a soft hackle rod or indicator rod. If you're an advanced caster, you can use a three weight to, uh, you know, throw streamers. But if you're new at this and you're looking for that kind of all around rod, I would say a four or a five, kind of depending on, you know, what size flies you think you're going to be throwing uh, and how big of a sink tip you'd be throwing. Let's talk about length a little bit. I really think about length as like how far do you need to cast, right? If your rivers are smaller rivers, this is the big hole here in, in Montana, we probably have to make an a average of 30 to maybe 60 foot cast on this river. So a, a switch rod, something in that 10 and a half to 11, 11 and a half foot length, that's perfect for a river this size. Now when you get to these bigger rivers, you know, the Missouri River comes to mind in Montana. It's a bigger river, the Big Horn, maybe you're down on the North Platte. These are big rivers. You're oftentimes throwing much longer. So a rod, this is the 12 and a half foot 5.6 Pro 4X. This is one of my favorite rods for a little bit bigger rivers. I will take this up to Alaska. It kind of plays in that world. I can throw some bigger stuff. Wouldn't be my first choice for soft tackle fishing. It's kind of on the cusp of it. But I think the big takeaway here, guys, is you know, think about the longer the rod, the longer the cast. The smaller the cast, the smaller the rod. Um, so kind of judge your length based off of that. So just to kind of recap everything, I think you, when you're thinking about your line size, think about the size of the fish you're fishing for, think about the, uh, you know, the tackle requirements that you have, and then base your length on how far you think you need to cast. Um, one thing that I think is a little bit confusing for those of you coming from single hand casting, the world of spay line ratings is different than single hand ratings. And by that I mean if you, you know, buy a five weight single hand rod, a five weight is really like two line sizes heavier in the world of spay. So when we say a five weight, this is almost a seven weight rod if you were to compare the power of a single hand rod. So that's really important to keep in mind when you're kind of thinking about what you're gonna get. One thing that I've realized in this whole game of spay is that you can have the best rod in the world and if you don't have the right line on it, you're, you're out of luck. It, I mean, you might as well go stake your tomatoes with it. And this conversation gets a little bit more complex. I'm gonna break this down, not in every line that's out there. We did do a video on that as well. Um, but what I wanna talk about is, what's the easiest way for you to get into the sport? And in my mind, there's kind of two lines that are really applicable. And this one is called a streamer switch. It's basically uh, a Skagit head that's integrated into a running line. And just to simplify things, a Skagit head is basically a short head that'll help you throw big sink tips and big flies. So it's just a really short, very aggressive line that works really well for throwing those bigger bugs. And one cool thing about this line, it's called the streamer switch again, is you can see I'm peeling this thing off the reel and we've got an integrated running line. And so what you're gonna see as you get into this that a lot of people are using what we call a shooting taper or a shooting head, and there's a loop-to-loop -loop connection here. Well, the reason why we came up with this line was one, it's just easy. Two, when you're trout spay fishing, a lot of times you may have to make a short cast. Maybe you're just popping through pocket water to get down to that next run, and you don't have those loops going in and out of the guides. So really nice, and, and if you're new to this, it's just nice and simple and easy, okay? So you would basically cast at that point you would strip in and you'd be casting this head in your sink tip. So that's the streamer switch. Now another kind of the sister to that is the airflow switch line. This is also an integrated line, but it's not nearly as aggressive as the, the Skagit. So it has, you can see a, a very fine front end. It's got a little bit longer taper. So this is gonna be the line that I'm throwing soft tackles with. This is a phenomenal little indicator line, so it's nice because I can just pop an indicator on, maybe throw a split shot on a couple nymphs, go to work. 
Um, again, fully integrated, so you essentially have two lines. You've got your streamer line, you've got your surface, you know, surface presentation line. With this system, you do have to have a spare spool, but that's not a big deal. Now, as you get more and more into this, you're probably going to realize there's a whole array of different lines out there. And so one of the lines that I just came out with, with Airflow, I helped those guys design, is called a Skagit Scout. Now, this is one of the shooting head styles of lines. So in other words, you can see there's no running line to this. So we would have to choose a separate running line. It would loop to this black loop. And then on the other side, we'd put a sink tip on the end. This is a super fun line. You can use it on both two-handed rods and single-handed rods. And in my mind, you know, if you are a serious streamer fisherman, this is where you'll go. You may not start here, but this is probably where, where you're going to end up. So this conversation can get a lot bigger, but those are the basics. Two lines, one for sinking, one for near surface or surface presentations. You're ready to go. The good news is the easiest part is really about the reel. If you're new to this and you want to kind of save some money, you know, that, this is where you want to save. Put your money into your rod, put your money into the, rod, the lines, excuse me. <clears throat> but with the reel, the biggest difference here is the size. Because, you know, when you think about like a five weight reel that you put on your nine foot five weight, it's going to be considerably smaller than what you'd use on a spay rod just for the capacity more than anything. That's the biggest thing. We need to have the capacity because these lines are much, much bigger than a single hand uh, line. So make sure you get a reel that balances properly with your rod. Trident can help you out with that. So those are the basics that you're going to have to, you know, get started with. There's some other little things we can talk about leaders and stuff like that. But, you know, that's all kind of easy stuff. This is really what you need to get started in the sport. At Trident, we've been fishing trout space since almost day one. And we hope you enjoyed the segment and it gave you a little bit more of an idea of how you can make use of these great new tools. If you have any more questions about Trout Spay or you're on the fence, give us a call at 888-413-5211 or email us 24-7 at support at tridentflyfishing.com. And don't forget, if you like these videos, give them a thumbs up. I'm Ben. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. <laughs>